you, Jommy. Ah, f- <laughs> John, Jesus. It's always the first line that I always get stuck on. <laughs> Hello, all you, Jommy. All right, so we're rolling. Hello, all you jolly jammers. Welcome along to Sport Like It Is. My name is Ed, and I've brought with me the formidable future. How are you doing, Rich? All right, and you? Good Very to be back well. for another episode. Of course, we are in the Keith's Garden, which is looking beautiful and lush as ever. Now Sam is here in Johannesburg. We're here to talk about cricket today, guys, with the Test Series starting next week between South Africa and Australia next Wednesday and in Cape Town. Can you imagine sitting on the grass bank with a nice bevy in your hand? Look, it's not quite the New Year's Day test, but uh, still, it's close enough. There's nothing quite like cricket at Newlands. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit today about the strengths and weaknesses of uh, the South African and Australian side. Let's start with South Africa. We've both highlighted the fact that the top order of South Africa is, in fact, the batting order in general is pretty outstanding. Hashim Amin at the top, the kind of guy that you want to babysit your kids if you're going out with your missus. <laughs> Just Mr. Responsible. Yeah, he is. Um, I, I think in, in terms of our batting, it's really, really impressive what we've got lined up. There are one or two doubts, though, as to how that composition of the batting order is going to be made up. Is it going to be Jacques Rudolph who's going to open the innings with Smith? What an average in first class cricket. He's been just unbelievable this year. He's been phenomenally good, but you've got to feel a little sorry for Alvaro Peterson, who hasn't actually done anything Did all right in India as well. He did well in India. His first class average as well is stunning this Mm. year. And I think Rudolph's just outweighed him a little bit with uh, with runs. But still, Rudolph, Smith, you've got Amla there, you've got Callis, A.B. de Villiers, hopefully he'll be Royce cricket, Jack it's just goes an from unbelievable batting order that we've got. It is outstanding, and I wanted to bring this up with you. Does Graham Smith's captaincy alone warrant a place in the test side? Much like John Smith arguments, actually. I think so, but I think the, the thing with Smith, uh, Smith versus Smith is that uh, Graham Smith is still going to put in some good performances. Mm. John Smith, I think everybody had pretty much realized that his best playing days were over. What we're seeing with Graham Smith is maybe a little bit of a lull in form. Not too impressive with the bat of late, but I still think he's got a couple of good knocks left in him. And I think, hoping, that uh, we're going to get a couple of those during the series. Can so go, it does warrant it, I suppose. Can we go back to Jacques Rudolph quickly? He's 30 years old now. Right, Jacques Rudolph. The forgotten one. He's got an average of 36 in tests. Is he, you know, is this, this his last chance? I suppose he's 30 years old now. I suppose they can go till about 36, 37 if you look at a guy like Ponting and Callis. They're still around then. Is this his last chance? I think so. I think as far as test cricket goes, you can extend your career further than maybe you would with uh, the limited over stuff. But uh, for him, he's got to make this series count. He might get a look in in the, South, in the Sri Lanka series as well. But for him, this is really the one where he's got to stick up his hand. They know what they've got in Elvira Peterson. Mm. If Rudolph doesn't come off, and I'm assuming they are going to select him for the first test if he doesn't come off I think they might look at Peterson for the Sri Lanka series we love AB de Villiers' enthusiasm as well Mark Boucher's future is always up in the air uh, with regards to the keeping do you think AB de Villiers is the long-term successor no not at all I don't think so I think the way that um, A.B. de Villiers has, has made it perfectly clear for all to hear he's uh, he said it a number of times in the press that he's not interested in doing it for the tests he might consider it for the limited overs games and that's fair enough there's less demand on him then but he has said before he wants to be the best number four batsman in the world he's not going to do that as a keeper as well I think they're honestly going to have to look at a long term successor for Mark Boucher and that's definitely not A.B. de Villiers the question remains as to who it is. All right, let's quickly look at Australia. Australia's top order, minus Simon Katic, who of course, of course was dropped. It's very, very thin. They've got a great middle order with the likes of Clark, Hussey, Ponting, who are all going to feature big time, and they've got huge runs in them. But their top order, Phil Hughes, worked out on a number of occasions. Sean Marsh, only a second test match. Who are they going to put in there to start? Of course, Watson, Mercurial, but is he going to make you a big 200 on, a, on, a, on the third day of a test match? I haven't got a clue. Where are they vulnerable? I think top order, I think you've illustrated it perfectly. Their top order is shaky. Once you get down to the middle order, though, it's solid as a rock. Mm. But for them, top order, really, really not good at the moment. Um, I, I think, as you say, Phil Hughes is a little bit of a gamble for them. Sean Marsh, I think, has a bit more experience, out. and he is slightly sounder in technique, which is maybe why they look to him a bit more. Shane Watson will make the side either way. He does offer them a bowling option as well, so I think he'll get in there fairly comfortably. He is the vice captain as well, so... I think, looking at them, it's Watson. If he comes off, it's fine. The guys will bat around him. But if uh, he and whoever they choose to open 
if they struggle, it's going to be a long, long day for Australia. Some solidarity in the Australian Camp Hussey backing pup. We are so happy that cricket season's here. We're loving it. We haven't even touched on the bowlers yet. If you'd like to get in touch with us, of course, we are on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. At Team SLII is where you can get in touch with us on Twitter. And uh, we'll maybe touch on the bowling next time. But uh, until then, cheers, guys. Cheers.